Jamaica, the land that everyone thinks they've discovered. Errol Flynn said, now I know where the writers of the Bible got their description of paradise. Christopher Columbus called it the fairest isle that eyes have ever beheld. But the Arawaks, who were here first, called it the land of wood and water. But for today's Jamaicans, it's not so much a question of sun, rum and palm tree paradise, but keeping the economy in shape, the tourists happy and the family together. First, we visit the wayward but exuberant son of the family, Kingston. <laughs> Athletic, fashion conscious and proud to be Jamaican. <laughs> and then on to Mandeville. A well-educated country cousin with a colonial past. Then Montego Bay and the grill. The fast-talking, high-spending, loose-living, terrible twins of the North Coast. But first to Kingston. and completely different cities. There's uptown and there's downtown. And here at the aptly named Crossroads district of town is where the great divide begins. North is uptown and most definitely upmarket. South is downtown and downmarket. Right, well, I think it's downtown for me, Raj. See you later. Oh, well, looks like I'm slumming it up with the rich kids. Taxi. <laughs> where poor Kingstonians live. A typical person will be earning about five quid a week. That's if they're lucky enough to be in work. Unemployment officially is running at 16%, but in an area like this, it's more likely to be 70. Flashing your wealth around isn't the done thing if you're an uptown kind of guy. It's all tastefully stored behind high walls and big gates in multi-million dollar pads like this one. If you're a real uptown high flyer, what you really want to do is get away from the hoi polloi and literally high fly it to the mountains. is Trenchtown, about as down as downtown gets. It was Trenchtown's most famous son that made Trenchtown famous. He wrote songs under this tree and played football on that field, even after he became a potent symbol of the black struggle throughout the world and an inspiration for Jamaica's disaffected youth. Trenchtown has always been poor in material terms, but it was rich in culture and pride. These days, it's just poor. Over a decade after Bob's untimely death, the Marley Museum only attracts a trickle of visitors, mostly foreigners prepared to brave Kingston's bad reputation. While his family squabble over the financial legacy, it seems that not many people are interested in the spiritual one, least of all young Jamaicans. For poor Kingstonians today, struggling with dignity and leading a conscious life is out. Getting rich quick and living life in the fast lane is in. The message that the youth want to hear is get it while you can and enjoy it when you do. And the music that delivers this message is, of course, dance hall. Shakon, shakon, gal, pick it me and whiny, whiny. Hear me now, just. Well, 
up your one because you know you can't wind up. Jump all about because you know you can't wind up. Kick out your foot. People like Bob Marley, you know, passed away, you know, that that sort of of the, the that section of the reggae has, you know, declined somewhat. And dance hall has, you know, forced its way then to the top. And the reason for this, I think, dance hall have a more have more life to it then. You know, to this third world generation. You know what I mean? It's more, you know, make you have fun. Where are the good places to check out dance hall? Well, there are many good places to check out dance hall in Jamaica, but um, like a Sunday evening, Elsa is a very perfect spot on the beach. Jamaica, Jamaica, hi, hi, yo. Jamaica, 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 Jano send me love, sweet Jamaica, 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 hi, hi, yo. Jamaica, 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 Jano send me love, sweet Jamaica. This is El Shabitra, we come to cool out. Watch all the girl, let my jump and shock out. By Fish and Festival, where we put to him out. When we feel thirsty, we drink a dragon stout. And when night time come, we go to the dance and shock out. Some of them short, some of them tall, some of them slim, some of them fat. But the whole of them in the dance hall and a rock. Hall's poetic offerings are a far cry from lyrical consciousness. They can be sexually graphic and just throbbing with macho bravado, where a woman's only role is to be grateful for the enormity of what she's about to receive. All the police and the call the soldier bring the brigade, make them bring the water because I'm quite the property and the fire, she call her mama. Dance hall should be educational still because most of the youths of today's like them find themselves in the dance hall. And if my little son is like every day him sing the DJ songs, but if him hears so well, you must be attentive in school and, you know what I mean, try to get good passes so that you can become somebody, you know, important in life then. You might just apply that. There's one major obstacle in the war against slackness. Slack DJs might see women as promiscuous nymphomaniacs who are nothing more than a collection of orifices, but check any dance floor. Who loves them the most? Women. I love the lyrics because it made me wind better. Uh -huh. Like, you have some DJ, um, DJ some, it's a style. I wind, but not like that. But when I lean here, the slackness, I wind better. So it's good wilding. Yeah. This is wilding. So what do you mean by wilding? I love it. It goes with my outfit sometimes. <laughs> is this like a sort of slack outfit? Yes, it is. It's like straight in. Shower on can say straight in. Yeah. Can you see your body right now, murder? You must want to teach your child for real. Can you see your body right now, murder? A simple definition of There's only one homegrown TV station here, and uptowners tend to snub its low-budget mix of soaps and chat shows. But if they did bother to tune in, they might just eavesdrop on some very interesting conversations. Hello everyone, I'm Diana Wright. Welcome to the show. Tonight we'll be taking a look at women's role in the Jamaican society. With me in the studio is Rajan Datar from the BBC in Britain. Raj, what do you make of us girls here? Well, thank you, Diana. I'm glad you asked me that question. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't take much for a dumb male to realise that women here aren't just getting mad about male chauvinism, they're also getting even. Take a stroll down any high street and you'll see that women are taking over the professions in banking, in teaching, in law, in journalism. And the future looks even brighter for Jamaica's female population. Last year at the University of the West Indies, seven out of ten graduates were females. So, Christine, tell me then how you think women are making progress in the professional fields. 
Well, certainly you see a lot more women entering the workplace. In terms of job applicants, you'll have more female applicants than male applicants. In fact, I think women tend to have better qualifications because I think they're, they work harder and they're more ambitious, whereas their male counterparts will try and find ways of making money the easier way, you know, and not furthering education and so forth. So what has been a woman's traditional role in Jamaica in the past? Traditionally, you find the woman is really the head of the household. She raises the family. She's also a breadwinner. Not only the men are the breadwinner. They, the women keep the family together, basically, while the men, they more or less do what they want to do. Men, they are chauvinists because they don't want a woman to have to be independent. They feel that like having one girlfriend is not really all. If they have like six or seven, <laughs> they feel that like they are done. I think they should stop and, and be faithful. Just have one girlfriend or the wife. <laughs> one wife. <laughs> Donna, do you agree with that? Well, I agree with what she's saying, but um, traditionally, Jamaican men are just basic chauvinists. Men have to really, really get involved now and start to, I mean, take up their responsibility more. It's not saying that they haven't been doing it, but you have to just come into it more and put aside this old cliche about Jamaican men being irresponsible because that's not a true reflection of the society. The world is changing and we have to really put that aside and to work together to put a better family structure and then we have a better Jamaica. And that's, I mean, the goal of our goal in part is incorporated. arrive in the big city in search of fame and fortune. Well, any employment and a pair of decent shoes will probably do most of them. They come here friendless and penniless and make straight for Coronation Market, right in the heart of downtown. Because in a country with no state benefit, this acts as a sort of unofficial social services department. So you could say that for new arrivals, it's the first step on a big ladder to success. On the other hand, you could describe it as a large snake leading you straight down into the ghetto. Yeah, I like Kingston. Why I like Kingston fast, I'm running in Kingston. One Manchester. Mm. So if I want to fast, I'm running around, put it down, and that's me. I'm certain I'm not going to go to the country and go and do my farming. <laughs> Although you're a working man, are there other people who come from the country yeah. and get involved in bad things? Yeah, it happen to enough people from the country. But me, I try my best to do happen to me. For me, pass them all the way with them. Rob Ryan, I think that I walk far from them. It's a bit of a drag but even uptowners have to go shopping sometimes. If they'd bothered to check their bills recently, they'd notice that prices have stopped rocketing as they used to. In fact, some things have even come down in price, things like rice and corned beef. But it's nothing to do with politicians and nothing to do with the financial whiz kids and everything to do with ordinary Jamaicans. With a little bit of help from the Pied Piper of the Airways. As we said, the controls for the heart of the sun. I think this is probably the single most important program we've ever attempted to do. Tonight we're going to try to raise one million dollars US in one week to make a moral statement to this nation. The way you save yourself is by saving Jamaica. What you're about to witness is people power, something that could even have taught Karl Marx a thing or two. Now suppose you work in the tourist trade and in one day you earn 50 American dollars and then your auntie from Birmingham 
sends you £10 as well. If you come to this bank, you actually get less than the going rate of exchange. In other words, you get less money back than you would at the bank next door. And you feel good about it. And it's not just you doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. And he's doing it. But what on earth's in it for them? To achieve something in life, you're going to have to suffer sometime or another. You're going to have to make the sacrifice. And I figure, I'll make the sacrifice now, I'll achieve something when I get older. It has really given me a very personal sense of pride to know that I can be part of something that is contributing to the national good. If you, are, you believe in nationhood, you try to build your nation, and in so doing, you buy from the bank instead of going to the underground market. People are determined to make this system work, and it will. It has been working, and it will continue to work. For ordinary Jamaicans to, to almost altruistically accept less money back for their foreign exchange, I mean, didn't that, didn't that surprise you? It surprised me at first because, you know, people always say that Jamaican, the, especially the uneducated ones, don't think in a, in, a, in a macro sense. They always think micro, that what can I get for my dollar today? I think even that has changed, um, where people are realizing, look, the more I sell, the higher I sell my US dollar, the higher I'm just going to have to pay in the supermarket for the goods anyway. So I think it's, it's, it's a, a new sense of, of economics that is emerging. ever vote in this constituency, you'd better be sure that you've made the right choice, because that's the way you're going to be voting for the rest of your days. This is the Belfast of the Caribbean, a downtown area of West Kingston, where each of the two close-knit communities bears a fanatical allegiance to either Siaga's right-wing JLP party or the left-wing PNP. People are ready to kill for your vote, and they do. Privately, the politicians refer to these areas as garrison constituencies, where votes are collected and protected by force. Football corner, and Mr. Sierra is shaking hands with the football, the football team. And this is 1982 when I represent Jamaica. This is my room, entertainer Shabaran on the door. My kitchen. Why is Edward Siaga and the JLP so popular in Tivoli? The reason why, Mr. Eddie come in and build Tivoli. He directly built Tivoli. All his building and things, he built it. So what was this before? It's just an open land. with pay raster, tattoo house, people living on it. He come in, take bullows a bullet down, build house for people to live in, so you find the people love him for that. Who can give you what you want, you will love them. Very 
very often the territory that people lose their lives defending is nothing more than a wasteland. On this side, it's PMP, and on that side, JLP. <laughs> Whatever side of the political fence you're on, the ghetto is ruled by mafia-style dons who use fear to ensure that no one steps out of line at election time and that there's no crime in their constituency, unless they're perpetrating it. And who's going to argue with a 17-year-old enforcer pointing an M16 at your head? This ballot box brutality is fueled by the easy availability of lethal weapons and ghetto kids just dying to use them. And who provides the guns? Allegedly, the politicians. and a gun to you and from this one how you start where then you find out and then you come and election thing around and difference and you going to find an MP then I want people to give them a bona fide support which I want can be in power then seeing so they use we the smaller youth in I get to poorer class when I have nothing and the rest of it way then them use if you have what they want seeing after one me come out victorious and thing like that them no not cater for no more I check through it uh, you do have a, a lot of uh, disciplined cops uh, who wants to do their job, right? But the moment that they go there and accosted a Dan, or you know, some of the supporters of, of that particular party, they're transferred you know, far, far away, and that's very inconvenient. Therefore, as a result, what you find is that to avoid this inconvenience, they just don't mess around with the dance, all right? Most people in the garrison constituencies realize that politicians are only telling them to kill their brothers and sisters. And as a res result of that civilization, right, uh, they're, they're getting to understand that, well, you know, it doesn't pay. The Jamaican motto is out of many, one people. It's a reference to the country's multiracial melting pot. They're all here, African, Chinese, Indian, Lebanese, Syrian, European, the list goes on. Trouble is, when it comes to the fashion and beauty industry, the message and the motto seems to have got somewhat diluted, and the great Jamaican melting pot is just a little light on the African ingredient. Usually, they don't come much darker than this. Girls, stay free maxi pads are now in this beautiful new package. Unfortunately, here in Jamaica, um, I'd have to say the agencies feel that the Brownins probably would succeed more as an international model away than they would, you know, than, say, versus a darker skin model. That's something that, you know, an agency has to realize that you can't really just not give everyone a fair chance because everyone does deserve a fair chance and our dark skin models do have a lot of potential and they can succeed if, you know, the, mo the modern agency would promote them more. How would that come through there, sir? No, Miss Cassie, big daughter. But I no lunchtime yet. I should not carry no shit pan. Massa? Massa drink dragon? Today's dragon. Maximum satisfaction. Depending on the product, sometimes you really have to go, especially when it's down market, as I said, you have to go something that someone that is not 
okay, down market is definitely, you're looking for a black person. She may be good looking, he may be good looking, but no mixtures, I mean, the real roots type person. There is a kind of stereotyping going is, on. And do you, you don't think you're responsible partly for that stereotyping? <laughs> that's, that's an unfair question. Um, yes, because we use it. No, because that is how people see it. I guess that we continue to use it. Yes, we're responsible um, for keeping that in, in the eyes of the, the viewers. But that is how they see it. That's how they see themselves. tired of the dust, the frenetic atmosphere, and especially the heat of Kingston, Madge, come on, then you're best off heading inland to the cool breezes of Mandeville. The old British colonials used to call it the last resort. It still is that, but luckily the days of slavery have gone. Come on, Madge, hurry up. I think all this uptown, downtown business has gone to his head. Turn the music up, Madge. down the road, you'll probably discover that you're lost. But one of the great advantages of using a pickup is that you can always collect plenty of backseat drivers. Go along! of Jamaica, a proper market town. The Brits made a beeline for Mandeville's cooler climes, which is why it's known as Jamaica's most English town. They made a packet out of the coffee and installed some very British essentials, like Jamaica's oldest golf course. One other link remains. Mandeville is in the county of Manchester. Yes, 